TV KPM. Alright, Assalamualaikum. Salam sejahtera. What's up everybody? Anda sedang menyaksikan Road to Success STPM 2020. Ha, kalau sebelum ni kita ada RTS SPM tapi kali ini adalah edisi STPM. Baik, hari ini 29 Mac 2021 yang mana berapa hari saja lagi kita akan masuk April. Lepas tu dah puasa. Lepas tu dah ganti puasa belum? Belum. Hai, apa nak jadi dengan anda semua ni? Ingat ganti puasa tau. Tak lama kita masuk bulan puasa. Baik, ha, bercakap mengenai hari ini kan. Ha, hari ini istimewa sikit sebabnya ha, merupakan ha, hari pertama atau episod pertama untuk STPM 2020 ini. Dan saya pasti anda semua nak tahu juga cikgu pilihan hari ini. Tapi sebelum tu ingat anda semua kita belum menang lagi. Sentiasa menjaga jarak satu meter. Sentiasa memakai pelitup muka dan mencuci tangan. Ya, saya tahu orang kata setiap hari kes makin turun. Ada peluang macam nak balik raya, insya Allah kita tak tahu lah kan. Tapi apa pun, kita jaga kita, alright, okay. Baik, sekarang ini saya nak bagi tahu anda siapakah guru pilihan hari. Hari ini bukan satu, bukan tiga, tetapi dua. Ha, siapakah guru tersebut? Ini dah, check it out. Itu dia cikgu yang akan mengajar anda semua untuk bagi subjek matematik T ha bagi calon-calon SPM 2020 yang akan merugi pada 6 April nanti ha ini dia kita bawakan kepada anda semua cikgu Afiq dan cikgu Nai. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Apa khabar? Ah, cikgu jangan nervous cikgu. Okay. <laughs> Nampak bagi saya macam grafik, dia relax dia, dia macam guru besar, dia tengok anak murid dia. Ha, jawab betul-betul. Okay. Cikgu Afiq, ah saya mulakan dengan cikgu Afiq dulu lah eh. Okay. Cikgu Afiq mungkin kita nak tahu juga uh, apa pandangan cikgu mengenai subjek matematik T ini yang mana 6 April. Ya, yeah, betul. Calon-calon calon STPM ini akan mengambil uh, orang kata kertas ini. Apa pandangan cikgu sendiri? Um, sebenarnya untuk paper matematik T ini ada pelajar rasa susah, okay. ada pelajar rasa senang. Baik. Tapi kalau kena dengan teknik dia, Aha. ada cara untuk pelajar skor betul-betul. Ada topik yang kita boleh mm -hmm. target. Okay. All the best pelajar. Itu dia. Kalau macam tadi kalau kita dapat lihat pun dia punya kod dia manjada. Wajada. Iya. Yeah. Maksudnya? Siapa yang berusaha, pasti dia yang berjaya. Itu dia daripada Cikgu Afiq. Ah, daripada Cikgu Nai pula. Ah. Tadi uh, macam Cikgu Afiq dia kata kalau kita berusaha, kalau kita bertawakal, insya Allah mendapat keputusan yang cemerlang. Bagi Cikgu sendiri, pandangan subjek ini adakah ianya susah ataupun senang je untuk orang kata dapat keputusan yang cemerlang Cikgu? Semua subjek actually sama. Semua oh, yeah. semua susah, sama-sama senang. Ha, nak senang, kena buat latihan. Itu, ha, itu dia. Sama-sama kita buat latihan. Ha, pastikan anda semua setia bersama kami selama satu jam ini. Okey, cikgu sebelum kita nak tengok uh, sekolah pilihan hari ini dan juga pandangan pelajar bagi subjek matematik T ini, cikgu saya nak bawa cikgu berdua pergi ke saya punya kedai farmasi. Uh, kedai farmasi saya boleh ke cikgu? Boleh, boleh. boleh. Ha, dekat sini kita melakukan segala protokol kesihatan. Jadi cikgu, jom kita ke sana. Alright. Aa, cuba lalu cikgu ya. <laughs> Okey, dekat sini aa, kita melakukan protokol kesihatan seperti yang saya katakan kepada anda semua. Ha, yang mana kita kat sini semuanya sihat alhamdulillah. Tapi masih juga berjaga-jaga sebab itu saya minta cikgu naik untuk aa, basuh tangan menggunakan gel pembasmi kuman. Alright dan juga cikgu Afiq silakan. Boleh, boleh. Aa, oh banyak cikgu Afiq ambil. <laughs> dan saya akan ambil juga untuk kita mencuci tangan dan selepas itu untuk memberikan keselesaan kepada cikgu um, uh, sewaktu mengajar kita boleh buka pelitup muka kita tetapi ha, janganlah buka saja lepas tu campak merata-rata kan kalau boleh kita letak di tempat yang selamat dan bersih sepertinya ha, macam cikgu Afiq ada bawa cikgu punya uh, apa kes dan cikgu Nebo ada juga kes ya. Oh lain macam cikgu Afiq dia punya mask ni. Ah, oh dia ada tek ada tekstur bunga-bunga. Ya. Yeah. Ah, beli mana? Jangan beritahu. 
<laughs> Okey, baik. Semuanya okay. dah. Alhamdulillah kita pun dah mengikut segala uh, protokol kesihatan dan sekarang ini. Cikgu, nak tahu tak siapa sekolah pilihan hari ini? Ha, ha, itulah tertanya-tanya juga ni. Ha, cikgu, cuba Cikgu Afi cakap. Okey, jom kita tengok. Okey, jom kita tengok. <laughs> <laughs> ini dia kat belakang kita. Ha, ini dah sekolah pilihan hari ini. Kita tengok. Assalamualaikum. Apa khabar? Selamat petang. Selamat petang semua. Selamat petang. Selamat petang. Selamat petang. Alright, Selamat dekat petang. sini. Kalau kita dapat lihat Cikgu Afiq dan Cikgu Nai, kita ada jo Jonathan. Betul Jonathan? Ya. Yeah. Atau nama famous dia John. <laughs> dan juga kita ada Kevin David. How are you Kevin? I'm good. How are you? Alright, I'm great. Thank you. Alright, kita ada juga Niran uh, Niran Jana. Betul? Hello. Ah, saya nampak bagi yeah, sekolah betul. dia tengah gantung kat belakang tu dekat pintu. <laughs> <laughs> Dan juga kita ada Lang Loy kita, Asia Singing. Ah, betul eh? I pronounce nama you? Ah, betul lah tu. Ah, betul cikgu. Ah, okay. Oh, betul cikgu. Dia panggil saya cikgu. <laughs> Dan juga kita ada Priyanga dan juga Tines. Hello guys. Alright. How are you? Okey, nampak dia orang bersedia cikgu. Okey dan saya Hi, pasti cikgu. mereka pun dah tak sabar dah nak belajar bagaimana untuk subjek ini kan. Uh -huh. ha, tapi sebelum itu kita dah tanya dah kepada cikgu berdua ini mengenai subjek matematik sti ini. Uh -huh. Kan katanya senang tapi nak tahu juga pandangan pelajar sendiri mengenai subjek ini. Senang ke susah? Jom kita tengok. Didik TV KPM Hi, my name is Gordon Ng and I'm from College Negata Anam de Samakota. So for me, I think that semester 3 is the easiest chapter out of uh, easiest semester out of the three semesters of maths. And this is because if you constantly uh, practice on the exercises, you'll be able to grasp the step very well. So I think that chapter 4, 5 and 6 are the easier chapters. So make sure you focus on chapter 1, 2, 3 so that you'll be able to get more marks. And also whenever you do questions, circle the key points, the keywords so that you'll be able to understand the questions properly. Saya Lim Cherry dan ikut Asian Katan Enam Desa Makota. So bagi saya, saya rasa uh, Maths T Sam 3 ni memang paling senang compare dengan Sam 1 dengan Sam 2 sebab tahu kan Sam 1, Sam 2 ada banyak differentiation, ada integration, lepas tu banyak formula kena hafal, ada trigonometry. Tapi untuk Sam 3, um, formula Sam 3 ni senang nak ingat, you just kena buat banyak soalan dan eventually you akan tahu the steps nak buat. So as long as you tahu macam mana nak the method dengan cara nak buat all the soalan, then you boleh buat um, lebih baik actually. So ambil peluang ini untuk Sam 3 Maths still the boost kind of great. Hello everyone, my name is Kuchuna Melina. I'm one of the candidate STPM 2020 and I'm from College Chikata 6 di Sumangkota that will be taking the MST exam for, for SEM 3. So when comparing uh, between SEM 3 and the other two SEM, I think that SEM 3 MST is a lot easier than others. I think it's because it, the marking scheme is uh, easier to score and most importantly, if you remember all the steps that teacher gave it to you and you know how to apply that in your answer, then I'm pretty sure you can get a good mark for that. So I hope you guys good luck for the last MST and remember to do a lot of exercise for MST. MST is not really Thank you. Didi TV KPM. Baik, itu dia pandangan pelajar mengenai subjek ini, Matematik ST uh, untuk calon-calon STPM 2020. Kalau kita nampak kat sini, Hai Cikgu Afiq, bersenang lendang nampak duduk. Belum masa saya lagi. Oh. <laughs> Okey, kita suruh Cikgu Nai dulu. Uh, orang kata mulakan sesi pertama ini, dah boleh Cikgu Nai. Eh? Sentiasa senyum, sentiasa ceria, itu dah Cikgu Nai. Okey, sebelum kita nak mulakan, kita nak tanya juga kepada pelajar-pelajar yang datang daripada dua buah sekolah ini. Iaitu Kolej Tingkatan 6 Seri Istana Kelang Selangor dan juga Kolej Tingkatan 6 Desa Mahkota Kuala Lumpur. Semua dah bersedia ke untuk kita mulakan uh, sesi pembelajaran kita pada petang ini? Bersedia. Bersedia. Semua semua bersedia. semua bersedia eh. Ah ni Ranjana yang nombor telefon dia 010. Ah yeah, yeah. lepas tu pada pandai lah teka. <laughs> <laughs> Okey. Alright, Cikgu Nai, boleh kita mulakan kita Alright, punya kelas? Baik, boleh. Baik, tanpa membuang masa lagi. Jom kita mulakan uh, subjek Matematik ST bagi calon-calon STPM 2020. Silakan Cikgu Nai. Alright, thank you Akmal. Sama-sama. So, assalamualaikum and good afternoon. Hi everyone. I'm very glad. I'm so glad to be here today for your final preparation before STPM exam. All right, so everyone candidates, how are you today? 
All right. And how about you students on the screen? Are you okay? Yeah, good, yeah, good. Yeah, good. All right. Yeah, good, good, good. Good. So good. good. All right. So are you ready? Ready? Yeah. Semua ready, Jago. Yeah. Right, ready, ready. Jadi rancangan tu dia tak sama-sama nak pergi baju sekolah. Dah All right. Exam dah. <laughs> Let's get started. All okay. right. So, I'm teacher Nai and teacher Afiq. Okay. So, today, we are going to recap the format of Mathematics T, STPM. All right. And we analyze STPM question mm -hmm. from 2015 until 2019. And we will share some examples and tips. All right. right. All right. So for mathematics tip paper, code nine five four through three, you have one hour and thirty minutes okay. to finish seven out of eight questions. Mm -hmm. All right. So the total mark is sixty. All right. So there are two sections: section A and section B. Mm -hmm. All right. In section A. We have six short questions, and you have to answer all the questions. All right. So the total is forty-five marks, and uh, you can spend about sixty to seventy minutes to finish this section. All right. All right. Okay. So next for section B. Mm -hmm. All right. There are two long questions, but you have to choose one question only. So what happen if you try to solve? Two questions, both questions. What happened? Masa pun. Actually, uh -huh. only the first answer will okay. be marked. Ah, all right. So don't don't waste your time. All right. right. All right. For each marks is fifteen marks, mm -hmm. and you are recommended to spend about twenty to thirty minutes. Okay. All right. For this uh, section. Mm -hmm. All right. So here are some of the tips which help you to answer questions. All right, for the decimal answers, you can use three and or four significant figures or three or four decimal places, all right? But during calculation, you can use four or five significant figures, mm -hmm. right? All right, next, you may use your scientific calculator, all right, but not a programmable one. Okay. 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 All right. So you may uh, answer your questions mm -hmm. either in English or Malay. Okay. All right. Cikgu Afiq punya calculator mana? Saya tak bawa hari ni. Aduh. 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 Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Students, uh, do you remember all the topics you have learned before in semester three? Do you? Yes. Still remember? Yes. Because yes. we have a long break, yes. right? Yes. Before SEM yes. 3 exam. So I hope yes. you still remember. We got data description, mm -hmm. probability, probability distribution, sampling and estimation, hypothesis testing, and chi-square test. All right? Okay? Can you follow me? All right, good. All right, let's analyze STPM paper for section A. All right, this one is for topics data description and probability, all right? So we got questions of median, interquartile range, box plot, Pearson coefficient, and you have to sketch distribution. You have quartile and skewness. You have uh, mean and variance, and also have to construct stem plot, all right? So for the next topic, probability, we have a question of combination, set, and also three diagrams. All right, so this one is for section A. What about section B? All right, for topic probability, we have probability, combination, and conditional probability. All right, all right. Can we continue? Yes, we okay. can, teacher. All right, thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, so this is chapter one. For data description, there are four diagrams uh, which represent the data given. All right. So we have stem and leaf diagrams. We have histogram, cumulative frequency curve, and box and wish curve plot. Sometimes we call it as box plot. All right. So we have few steps. All right. To construct stem and leaf diagram. All right. So first step. 
determine the smallest and largest value in the data. All right. So next, identify the stamp. For example, the data is 40, so you choose 4, number 4 as a stamp. All right. Then next, draw a vertical line. All right. This is vertical line. And you can list all the stamp. All right. Next, fill in the leaves. All right. And sort the leaf data in ascending order. All right. So this one, eh? Uh, six, eight, nine in ascending order. All right. So zero, one, three, three in ascending order. All right. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. All right. So this is the most important thing, Ahmad. Ah. All right. So don't forget to write down the key. Okay. Uh, no key, no mark. Very important. All right. No key, no mark. All right. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So this is. Uh. What's this? What is that? Uh, if you what ask me, teacher, I'm yeah. going to ask uh, my friend, uh, Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan, please, what man, is that? help me, brother. What is this? <laughs> All right, box and whisker plot. Sometimes we call box plot. All right? Okay. All right, so Priya, could you please share with us uh, what we need to draw a box plot? Priya, can you please share? First of all, we need first quartile. All right. Yeah, sure. First of all, we need first quartile, all right. and then second quartile, and third right. quartile, and then upper fence and lower fence. All right, That's lower fence and upper fence. Wow, good all job! All right, all right. good, good, good. All right, yes, that's right. Uh, we must have uh, first quartile. Mm -hmm. Second quartile actually is median. Third quartile, and you have to calculate lower fence, upper fence, and then you get the outliers, all right? So how to get this outlier? All right. So actually, the outlier is uh, the value lower than lower fence and the value which is uh, more than upper fence. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is outlier. Sometimes the question has no outlier. Okay. But you have to find the lower fence and upper fence. Mm -hmm. All right. What is the most important or tips for box plot and wish plot? Mm -hmm. You need draw a box plot on the graph paper. All right? So without graph paper, no mark also. Okay, remember. So the key words here is draw. All right? When you see the word draw, means that you have to use graph paper. All right? Okay. So I hope all of you can understand. Oh, yeah. Okay, including Akma. All right? I understand. Kevin, do you all understand? Right, good. Kevin, <laughs> where are you, Kevin? <laughs> All right, so I think uh, it's very clear, right? Tinesh? All right? All yeah, right. Yeah, okay. All right. So next, all right, some of the questions ask uh, to comment mm -hmm. about the skewness of distribution. All right? Mm -hmm. So here, we have about three methods, all right, to determine the shape of the distribution. All right, so for the first method, we use mean, median, and mod. All right. So the if the value mean equal to mod equal to median, so that that means shape of the distribution is symmetrical. Okay. This is the shape of symmetrical. All right. All right. So what about this one? Okay. So mean more than median, more than mod. All right. So if if this uh, situation means that the shape of distribution is positively skewed. And you can observe the whisker. Right? The whisker is longer on the right side. All right. Clear? All right. So for the next situation is mean less than median, less than mod. Mm -hmm. So means that this the distribution is negatively skewed. And look at the whisker. The whisker is longer at the left side. All right? Clear, right? Easy, okay. teacher. Easy. Yeah, easy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, can we move? Yes. Can. Uh. All right, good. Yes. All right. Okay. This is the next method or second method. And what How is to that? determine the shape of distribution. All okay. right? So, at this time, we use quartile. All right. Mm -hmm. So we have first quartile, second quartile, which is mean uh, median, and third quartile. All right. So now uh, we are going to 
look at the value of two values. Huh? Q, uh, second quartile minus first quartile and third quartile minus second quartile. So it means that we have two parts here, uh, two value. Okay, first value and second value. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you observe, and then uh, they are equal. All right. So it means that the distribution is symmetrical. All right. Okay. So same size. Okay. Next. So here. Uh, the second part bigger than first part. What means? What does that mean? Uh, if you ask me, teacher, I will ask my friend here, Cikgu Afiq. Right. Oh, uh, Cikgu Afiq know all Cikgu about Afiq, this. Cikgu Afiq, kalau terdapat jawab. Cikgu Afiq know. Cikgu, hai. Bapak malu. Right. Bapak malu lah. The size on the right is bigger than the left. All right. So, uh -huh. means that the distribution is positively skewed. Okay. Next, the last one. Mm -hmm. What about if the left side mm -hmm. is bigger than the right side? Therefore, the distribution is negatively skewed. All right, clear? All right, yeah. so we have uh, one and second method. All right, what about the third method? Um, Tinesh, ah, Tinesh, can you help me? Yeah. All right, so please uh, share with us what is the other method? to determine the shape of distribution? Uh, we can determine by using Pearson coefficient, actually. All right, very good. Oh, bravo, good. bravo. Yes. Uh, we are? 10 points for you, brother. Yeah, we are using Pearson coefficient, all right? right. So here are two uh, formula for Pearson coefficient, mm -hmm. all right? So for the first formula, we have mean, mode, and standard deviation. And for the second formula, we have mean, median, and standard deviation. All right. So how to determine the shape? How to determine? Yeah. Just now, teacher, do. I saw Kevin. Dia angkat tangan. Dia nak jawab soalan cikgu. Kevin, where are you? Uh. All right, Kevin. <laughs> you can try. So yeah, how can. to know the shape of the distribution? If oh. the Pearson coefficient is more than zero, then it is positively skewed. And similarly, if less than zero, then negative. Wow. wow, amazing, amazing, Good Kevin. job, my friend. Yeah, good job, good job. All right, so if the value of Pearson coefficient more than zero means that the distribution okay. is positively skewed. Yes. And if the Pearson coefficient less than zero means that the distribution is negatively skewed. All right, easy? Easy. easy. For you, easy, teacher. For you, easy. <laughs> of course. For me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, it's okay. All right. Okay. Let's analyze. Okay? This one is uh, analysis of STPM paper mm -hmm. for topic probability distribution and sampling and estimation. All right? So this, is, this one is for section A. Okay. So we got a question of discrete, continuous, and binomial distribution all right and for sampling and estimation we got a question of probability of sample proportion mm -hmm. we got confidence interval and also probability of sample mean all right so this is for section a for section b uh, we got the question about binomial and normal approximation and also poison distribution all right. So also got uh, continuous for 2019. Mm. All right. So I think uh, we need uh, one example. All right. Maybe for this topic or another topic, sampling and estimation. All right. Are you ready for the next example? Are you All ready, right. guys? Ready? Yeah, ready? All right, ready. 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 Always yes. be All right. ready. So okay. before that, uh, for section B, for topic sampling and estimation, mm -hmm. okay, what we have? All right. So we got questions of unbiased estimate of population mean and variance. All right. Then we got confidence interval. Mm -hmm. All right. I think this one is favorite question, confidence interval. And we got probability of sample proportion standard error, central limit theorem, and also the question asks you to find estimation error, all right, and also find the size. All right, okay. Next, 
let's share some cases of confidence interval. All right, so we have a case about confidence interval for normal population, confidence interval for population with non variance, which is uh, from large sample, and we have uh, confidence interval for population with unknown variance from large sample, and the third, uh, the fourth case is confidence interval for population proportion. All right, so. Next, all right. I prepare for you uh, some of the question okay. about sampling and estimation. Akmal, do you think you can solve it? Me, ah, obviously I am gonna ask my friend lah. Ah, Niranjana, please lah help me lah, Niranjana. Yes, Niran will help <laughs> us. All right. All right. Okay. So let's read the question first. Can, can. we? All right. So first question. Actually, this one is we got uh, about three parts of questions. All right, for the first question is, explain what is meant by the term random sample. Only one mark, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, so next question is, in a random sample of 350 students, mm -hmm. it was find, uh, found that 130 of them do not take tuition. So what you have, you have to calculate and approximate 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all students who do not take tuition, all right? So the last part of the question is you have to estimate the size of random sample for an approximate 95% confidence for the proportion to have a width 0 0.04. All right, let's uh, answer the questions, all right? Okay. So, uh, Akman said Niran, we yeah, my us? friend. All yeah. right, Niran. My neighbor, my neighbor. Yeah. All right, Niran, good, good. Help your neighbor lah. All right, Niran, <laughs> please help us. What mean by the term random sample? Okay, uh, the term random sample means that a random sample is a sample where every element has an equal chance to be chosen. All right, very good, Niran. So, the keyword is every element has equal chance to be chosen. All right. All right, so next, you have to calculate the confidence interval. All right, this is the formula, mm -hmm. all right? So what we have, what we need, huh? we need P hat, Z value, and N. All right, so how to find P hat? P hat is proportion of random sample, all right? So how to find it? X uh, divided by N, all right? And so this diagram actually show us about 95% confidence, all right? So the middle area is 0 0.95 and at the right side and left side is 0 0.025, all right? So 1.96, we get it from standard normal table, okay? So I'm sure all of you know about it, right? All right, so let's uh, continue. So all of the value we got, so we just substitute into the formula and we get the value. This is the interval, confidence interval, 0 0.3208 and 0 0.4221. And please write down what is the significant figure you use, okay? Either four significant figures or three significant figures, all right? And all right, so we have um, last, last one, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we have the last part, estimate the size of a random sample. All right, so this one is uh, also for 95% confidence, means that the value of Z and P hat are the same. All right, so we use the same value. Now, uh, we use less than equal 0 0.04. All right, now you have to find the value of N. Mm -hmm. So what you got, you got 2242.2, but we need integer, all right? We need integer number, so means that the answer will be 22. Four, three. All right. So, what do you think? Uh, can you understand yeah. so far? Or maybe you guys have any questions to ask? No, right? Oh yeah. no. No, <laughs> no ah. Uh. Right. Uh, Liverpool. No ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so I think uh, we are done for the first part. Allah, we oh, want more, teacher. We, we want done. more. Right. Until seven, teacher. Until seven. But don't worry, don't uh. worry. Teacher Afid will take over 
for the second part. No, he's my co-host today. <laughs> no, I will, I will co-host, co-host. I'm co-host. <laughs> Alright, jadi cikgu. Alright. Terima kasih uh, cikgu Nai uh, dan students. Uh, Mereka tak habis lagi, mereka akan sambung dengan kita selepas Sikit. ini bersama dengan... Cikgu Afiq pula. Uh, cikgu Afiq, katanya tadi nak jadi host di TV. Eh. Alalah, cikgu cuba cakap. Okey, kita nak berhenti rehat. Selepas ini, kita akan sambung dalam Road to SPM. Cuba okay, cakap. Okey, kita berhenti rehat seketika. Kita sambung selepas ini. <laughs> dalam Road to Success. Dalam Road to Success STP. M dua puluh dua puluh. Cantik. <laughs> Dede TV KPM. Okay. Dede TV KPM. Alright, masih lagi menyaksikan Road to Success STPM 2020. Betul, eh? <laughs> Alright, tadi kita dah bersama dengan Cik Gunai. Dan sekarang ini kita ingin bersama dengan co-host saya. Eh? Mana Cik? Mana Cik Gofi? Kembali ke Cik Gofi. Ah, yang boleh kita dapat lihat Cik Gofi dah pun bersedia di sana bersama dengan student daripada dua buah sekolah iaitu ah, daripada Seri Istana Kelang Selangor dan juga Desa Mahkota Kuala Lumpur. Baik Cikgu, Afi dah bersedia? Oh, sentiasa bersedia. Wah, oh, dengan kata datangnya daripada pukul 4 pagi, tak tahulah. <laughs> Okey Cik Gofi, jom kita mulakan kelas kita. Okey, thank Silakan. you. Okey, terima kasih Akmal. Sama. Okey, kelas students. So before I proceed, just now, our friend tell us, okay, hmm. chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, you have to do well. You have to score. This question will give you more marks. Okay, so now, today, I will continue the second part with chapter 5, which is hypothesis testing. Okay, in hypothesis testing, we have two types of hypothesis. Number one, population mean. Mm -hmm. Okay, mu. And then number two, we have population Proportion, we use P. And then for this one, we can split into small sample and large sample. Okay. And then in this question, remember to recall your chapter 4. You have learned before point estimate, especially unbiased estimate of population variance. Sigma hex square. You have to know the formula. Okay, student okay lagi ke? Are you with me? Student? Yes, sir. Petang-petang yes. jangan yeah. tidur. Don't sleep petang-petang. Tengok Cikgu Afiq mengajar dulu. Tengok Priya. Priya kejap ada, kejap tak ada. Priya. Ah, semua okey lagi tu ada, ada, ada. Okay, let's continue. Okay. Before we proceed, let's look at analysis of STPM paper in section A right. for chapter 5. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you can see, mm -hmm. 2015, 2016, 2017 and 2019, we have hypothesis testing of mu. Okay? okay, and then in 2018, we have hypothesis testing on P. Okay, so let's continue with the next one. In section B, this question came out with hypothesis testing of mu, mu, and mu in mm -hmm. 2015, 2017, and 2019. In 2017, we have proportion also for two tail tests. Okay, okay. So, before we proceed, you must know how to do your report, how to do your testing, how do you write your hypothesis testing, how do you answer. So, to make, uh, to make it easy for you to understand, I gave you seven steps that you have to remember. You follow the step, you will be fine. Okay, just follow the seven steps. Step one, upper. Step two, upper. Step three, upper. Okay, so for step one, you have to define your random variable x and also with distribution if it is given. Okay, for example, we define our x, let x equals to whatever do you have. Mm -hmm. And if you have x distribution, you write x follow normal distribution. The same thing happened for the yellow one. This yellow one is for your proportion. So we define p equals to proportion of whatever the question gave you. Mm. Okay, and then step two, you must state your hypothesis. H not equal, H not equals, always equal. Okay, and then H1, more than, less than, or not equals to. Okay, Akmal okay lagi ke? I'm very good, teacher. Ah, stand by, ya. <laughs> saya tanya soalan sekejap lagi, mesti kena jawab. Kalau cikgu tanya saya, nampak? Saya ada uh, jiran sebelah rumah, ada cousin saya, ah, ada... Student-student, stand by, ya. Eh. Sekejap lagi, saya tembak soalan dekat awak pula. Okay, okay. let's continue dulu. Step 3. If H0 is true, and CLT, you have to apply CLT, Central Limit Theorem, or Normal Approximation for 
population mm -hmm. proportion p hat okey ayat dia sama sahaja if h0 is true mu equals to whatever you have to refer to your mm -hmm. h0 you have h0 already before the question will give you okey and then since n equals to whatever n ini adalah okey this n is your sample size Okay, sample size more than 30, you can apply your CLT if the question doesn't say about normal distribution. And also the same thing happen for the yellow part is for your population proportion. Okay, step four, you must state your significant level. The significant level will be given in your question paper. Just write again. And you have to find your alpha, Z alpha. The same thing happen for two tail tests. Alpha. Z alpha over 2 and then we go to step 5 rejection criterion you must write your rejection criterion mm -hmm. okay if h0 you compare your h0 reject h0 if z test more than whatever you calculate here okay and then this one reject h0 for p small sample population proportion for small sample and then step 6 ah this one so student Remember, you have to know what formula to use. Okay, remember. Okay, Z test X bar minus mu over square root sigma square over N. And this one for population proportion, P hat minus P over square root PQ over N. And this one is for small sample. And last but not least, don't leave your answer without conclusion. Because we have conclusion. We have mark for this one. If you don't write conclusion, you won't have, you won't get the mark. Okay? First one, you have to compare. You must compare. Here, you compare with your rejection criterion before. You have to compare and then you conclude whether you reject or you do not reject. And finally, if this one, there is sufficient or insufficient evidence at how many percent significant level to conclude so you have to copy back the question okay so let's look at one example okay student masih boleh bersama saya ke okay boleh 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 okay saya nak volunteer uh, teacher me me i am volunteer teacher okay yeah okay let's read the question first akmal okay, okay. please read the question for me uh, if like that teacher i think as a ex prefect in desa mahkota kuala lumpur i'm going to give to sia singing lah uh, singing help me lah okay singing sia <laughs> Seb, help me. Okay, Sia. The first one, we read the question. Okay, student, you have to know how to extract info from the question. Okay, one by one, you have to read line by line. Okay, the first one, a company packs sugar in packets label 1 kg. Okay, Sia, what can, you, what can you understand from the first one, from the first sentence? From the first sentence, I understand that one is the X distribution. Okay, so that one is the definition of X. Okay, so yes. X adalah mass of sugar in a packet. We will use this one later in step one. Okay, easy. You baca soalan satu per satu and then we bring it out. Later, we will do step by step. Yeah, so okay. easy, teacher. Easy, easy. Mass is easy. Yeah. Nothing is hard. Yeah, very okay. easy. The next one. The mean and standard deviation of 200 packet selected at random 998 gram and 16 gram okay siapa lagi jonathan mm -hmm. what do we understand about this one your population or your sample jonathan uh, sample sample because selected at random so this one is your sample mm -hmm. what is 200 jonathan sample size sample size n equals to 200 998 what do you understand? Your X bar. X bar because you are taking from sample. X bar equals to 998. What is 16, Jonathan? S. Test. S because this one adalah standard deviation for your sample. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. Okay. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay. Welcome. All right. The next one, the question asks you to perform at 5% significant level. So mm -hmm. you are given significant level 5% and finally determine whether the mean mass of packet of sugar by the company is less than 1 kg so mm -hmm. this one kita akan keluarkan dalam 
hypothesis H0 and H1 mu equals to 1000 mu less than 1000 because the question say less than so copy sahaja Okay, kenapa saya tukar daripada 1 kg kepada 1000 because everything given to you in gram. So you change accordingly. Boleh? Okay, student at home, okay? Okay, teacher. Okay. Easy. Berapa step tadi aku mak kita ada? Ah, uh, cikgu, naik berapa tadi cikgu? Ada 7. 7. Ah, ni sini 6. Situ 7. 7 step. 7 step. Okay, kita ambil step kita yang pertama. Uh, okay. Okay, step yang pertama you have to define your random variable x. Do we have that one before? Ah, uh, easy teacher. Easy. Oh, yeah. X is your mass of sugar in a packet. You just copy from question. Step two. Yeah. Do we have hypothesis from the question? Very easy, teacher. We got already, right? Yes. Less than 1,000. Easy, student. So, apa yang susah sangat? Copy, copy, copy. Everything is there. Yeah. Ha, step three. Ha, step three. Siapa belum lagi, ya? Ah, Priya, Priya. Priya. Ah, just now I saw Priya angkat tangan. Priya, ah. if H0 is true, what happened if H0 is true? <laughs> Priya, are you there? Uh, no, okay. Sorry. Once again, Priya. Mu is equal to thousand. Yes. If H not is true. If H not 1, is true, mm. mu is one thousand. Just copy. You know already from your first step. Okay. Okay. So this one we have to apply CLT because the question doesn't say about normal distribution since n equals to two hundred. This one question gave you. And then you write CLT, you apply CLT. So this one is sigma hat square. So for sigma hat square, you have to calculate. Mm -hmm. Don't use 16. Don't use 16 because 16 is your standard deviation of sample. Okay, this one sigma hat square, unbiased estimate. Unbiased estimate of population variance. So calculate by using the formula here. Okay, this formula you have to remember class. Huh? Okay, students, boleh remember? Mm -hmm. Okay, boleh ya? Yeah? In chapter 4 and chapter 5, we will use this one. Okay, and then you got the distribution. Step 4, significant level given or not in question. Ada tak? Akmal, ada soalan? Ada tak bagi soalan ini? Adalah, cikgu. Berapa persen? Berapa persen itu berapa cikgu naik? Tadi kita ada buat sama-sama soalan ini. Kita ada? Lima. Ha, betul lah saya tulis kat sini tadi. Ha, ada lima kat situ kan? Ha, ha. Betul, betul. Okay, one tail test at five percent significant level. Okay, so your alpha is 0.05. Uh -huh. Your Z alpha is minus 1.645. This one you have to refer to your hmm. table. Remember students, okay, your table given in the question paper at the back. Remember, okay? You look at the critical value at the bottom. Don't find, buang masa. Ambil sahaja terus di bawah. Mm -hmm. Okay, step five, your rejection criterion. Apa ayat kita? Reject H naught if Z test less than minus one point six four five. You just follow the step. Everything given already to you. Okay. Next one, step six, test statistic formula. You remember the formula. Don't interchange between X bar and mu. Jangan tukar tempat. Okay? And then you put the value. Your X bar you have already. Your mu you have already. Okay? This one you have already. So you just press your calculator. The calculator will give you the answer. So, easy. Nothing is hard. Okay? Mindset student, yeah? Sentiasa buat mindset. Maths is easy. You must do practice sahaja. Okay. And step seven, you compare. Okay, and then you reject your hash not. Okay, okay. Alright. Habis that one. Cikgu, before that, boleh tak kita take a break dulu, Cikgu? Boleh. Uh, Saya pun penat juga ni. Okay, sebab Tinesh nak pergi toilet sekejap tadi. Boleh, boleh, uh, boleh. <laughs> okay, Tinesh, you can go to the toilet now. <laughs> Alright. Kita dah take a break dulu. Okay, guys. Jangan pergi mana selepas sini. Kita akan sama balik dalam Road to Success STPM 2020. Boleh keluar ke? Didik TV KPM Didik TV KPM Murid-murid masuk ke kelas. Ha, kita masih lagi menyaksikan Road to Success STPM 2020 bersama dengan Cikgu Nai dan juga Cikgu Afi. Baik, ha, tanpa membuang, membuang masa lagi, jom kita sambung balik kita punya kelas kita dalam subjek Mathematics T. Dipersilakan Cikgu. Okey, 
So let's continue with the last one. This chapter, mm -hmm. students, you must do well in chapter six. Normally, chapter six will give you marks from eight to eleven marks out of sixty. So you must do well. And then this one, we have two subtopic only. Number one, goodness of fit, and then the second one is test of independent. Okay. So normally, if you can see here in two zero one five one seven. Test of independent. Mm -hmm. And in 2016, 2018, 2019 is goodness of fit. Ratio, poisson and normal. Okay, so let's go to how to carry out goodness of fit. This one also you have seven steps. Step mm -hmm. one, you state your hypothesis. Your H0, the data fit. And then H1, the data doesn't fit. And then step two, you copy your table again. And remember, you have to calculate your P and expected frequency. You just add one more row and uh, two more rows for P and expected frequency. And combine small frequency for E less than five. OK, next one, step three, degree of freedom. V equals to K minus one. OK, and then step four, significant level and critical value. Okay, you just state sahaja. Chi-squared test at 5% significant level. If the question say 1%, chi-squared test at 1% significant level. And then your alpha, kalau 5%, 0.05. Kalau 1%, berapa? 0.01. Okay, and then chi-squared alpha V, you have to refer to your chi-squared table. Step five, rejection criterion. Ayat kita sentiasa sama sahaja. You reject hash naught if chi squared test more than whatever you calculate. Okay, and then step six, test statistic. You copy again and then you do calculation for O minus E whole square over E. Okay, and then your chi squared test, remember to sum up all your calculation. Okay. And then conclusion. Jangan lupa tulis conclusion. Student ni lupa tulis conclusion, you will lose a lot of marks. Two or three marks here. Okay? Since chi-squared test equals to whatever you calculate, more than, if more than, we reject H0. Or since chi-squared test less than your critical value, you do not reject. Itu sahaja. Okay? And then you write down your sentence. There is sufficient or insufficient evidence at 5% significant level, for example, to conclude that, whatever you want to conclude, you copy back your question. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look at one example. This one, kita baca soalan, you are given table, contingency table. This one, contingency table. So this one, question about independent test. Okay, so let's look at this one. So this one, kita tahu already, we know already, H0 independent and H1 not independent, and 5% significant level. From the question, you can see clearly already. OK? OK, so step one, you have to state your hypothesis. Remember, your H0 is independent. Your H1 is not independent. So you just write, the preferred communication method and generations are independent. For H1, not independent. That's all. Settle step one, we go to step two. Step two, you have to calculate your expected frequency. The question doesn't give you row total, column total, and grand total. So remember, when you write, you must have your total. Semua mesti ada total. How do we calculate our E? Remember to cut to times your row total times column total divide with grand total. Okay, so you calculate and then you write in bracket. Remember, your E in bracket and then your O not in bracket. Okay, your E in bracket, your O not in bracket. Okay, and then step three, you have to state your degree of freedom after you combine your E. Okay, so formula is R minus one times C minus one. So two minus one because we have two rows. And then three minus one because we have three columns. So we, our answer for V is two. Step four, significant level and critical value. Okay, so 5% significant level. Our alpha is 0.05. This one, chi squared alpha V, you have to calculate from your table. 
We refer to your table. 0 0.05 and 2 degree of freedom. Okay? And then step 5, rejection criterion. Saya dah bagi dah tadi ayat. You just write, reject hash not if chi squared test more than 5.991. Step 6, test statistic. How do we do? We copy all our all our O, we copy our E, and then we use this formula, remember? O minus E square over E. And then you calculate by using your calculator. You can show one calculation only. Just show one calculation only. The rest you use calculator to fill up. No need to show all working. Just show once enough already. Okay? And remember your chi squared test, you must sum up all everything here. Okay? And then I get 16.8486. Okay? Step 7, conclusion. Okay? So you have to compare between 16 and 5. Okay, so kita reject, hash not, there is sufficient evidence at 5% significant level to conclude that the preferred communication methods and generation are not independent. Okay, okay so in conclusion, okay, sebenarnya MEXT ni senang, easy for you to score if you practice, practice, practice. Practice a lot of past year. Okay. And read the question carefully because in the question you have info, info that you can write in your answer and manage your time wisely. Okay, tahu pembahagian masa, masa seperti yang cikgu nak cakap tadi. Okay, and review your answer if you have extra time. Okay, thank you so much, Cikgu Afi, for the knowledge, uh, for the knowledge semua kan. Cikgu, mungkin kita, uh, Cikgu ada ucapan lah kan untuk calon-calon STPM uh, 2020 ni kan. Uh, mungkin ada sedikit, Cikgu, short and sweet. Okay, so for students, okay, hmm. jangan takut untuk jawab paper. Okay, paper kita, paper senang, you can score a lot in our exam. Okay. okay? Jawab soalan yang mudah dulu and mm -hmm. do well in that question. Especially 6, 5, 4 and 1. Okay, okay this chapter you must go. Alright, thank you so okay. much Egofi once again. Dan juga thank you so much guys. Daripada Sekolah Seri Sana Kelang Selangor dan juga Desa Mahkota Kuala Lumpur. I wish you all the best and pass with flying colours. Alright? Thank you guys. Thank you. Okay, Thank dan Cikgu Nai terima kasih juga. Ah. Sono duduk jadi host eh. Best. Best. <laughs> so, sampai itu saja. Terima kasih Cikgu Afiq. Okay, Cikgu Nai sekali lagi. Kita jumpa selepas ini dalam Road to Success STPM 2020. Assalamualaikum. Peace. Didik TV KPM. Salam sejahtera, salam bahagia. Saya Puan Tila Gawati, anak perempuan kalianan, merupakan ibu kepada Malan Anbalagan yang sedang menuntut uh, kolej tingkatan enam uh, Sri Istana Klang. Sebagai ibu, saya sangat-sangat berharap anak saya lulus dengan cemerlang dalam STPM. Dan juga saya mendoakan semua pelajar yang menduduki STPM uh, berjaya dengan cemerlang. Anda merupakan pelajar yang betul-betul uh, menghadapi cabaran yang tinggi tahun ini dan saya mendoakan kejayaan kepada anda semua. Terima kasih. Ya, dan salam sejahtera. Saya berjaya resmi anak perempuan Sufia, juga ibu kepada Mirai Madi, anak perempuan Seluruh Durai yang akan menduduki STPM, peperiksaan STPM tidak lama lagi. Harapan saya kepada anak saya dan juga semua calon Okey, selamat menjawab. Jawablah dengan tenang. Jaga kesihatan anda semua. Doa kami iaitu guru dan juga ibu apa sentiasa akan melindungi dan merahmati anda semua. Selamat menjawab. Good luck. Do the best. God will do the rest.